God. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dan, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're doing another printer review. If you can't tell, I am dripped out completely in Prusa merch, except for my pajamas. Get a little cozy for this one. I am very, oh, this is. We're gonna be unboxing the Prusa Core 1, made by God himself, Joseph Prusa. Fun little backstory, my older brother Stefan got me into 3D printing about seven to eight years ago. And one of his first printers that he ever built and used was the Prusa Mendel i2. That is what it looks like. Yes. It's come a long way. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God. It even has a watermark. I am really excited to uh, unbox this bad boy and see what it can do. So let's open her up. Yes, and look, foreign language. That's pretty cool. We're gonna have to put this on the floor. One second, boys. It's actually not too bad. These are the anti-vibration feet. Stick them on here. Build plate. Using the two screws in the back, you can align your build plate to this little nub. And that's good. All right, that's in. And then this clips on like that. Nice. After turning the machine on, select your language of choice. The Core 1 uses NFC to load Wi Fi credentials from your phone. Once Wi Fi is connected, you can then register your printer with Prusa Connect. The calibration process is next and similar to most machines. However, the Prusa Core 1 uses a load cell in the nozzle that requires the user to apply pressure to make sure it's working. Once all the calibration steps were done, I downloaded the Prusa Slicer and installed it. After logging in, my Core 1 was ready for some action. Side note, if you do want to send files from your computer to your Core 1, plug the USB drive into your Core 1 because it needs a storage device. For my first print, I decided to print the MF Doom mask, which is available on printables. I dropped the file in, added supports, and then sliced it on regular settings. I then sent it to my Prusa Core 1 to begin printing. The MF Doom mask printed flawlessly and the layer lines were almost invisible. The supports popped off super easily and had little to no scarring on the surfaces. Next, I printed a Dr. Doom mask, which is available on wireframe and I used organic supports in the slicer this time. It printed perfectly and the supports were much easier to remove. The printed part almost appears injection molded and the consistency of the layers is phenomenal. All right, so these are my final thoughts on the Prusa Core 1. One thing that I want to note about the Prusa brand, not just the Core 1, is the fact that they are almost entirely open source and extremely consumer focused. For example, if something were to break on any of the Prusa printers, you can go onto their website and download almost any part and 3D print it yourself. Also, if you want to modify your printers or change the firmware, you totally can. To get into the review of the Core 1, the print quality on this machine is insane. It might seem like a hot take, but out of all of the printers I've owned and currently use, the Core 1 has the best print quality of any of my machines. I was blown away by how nice this thing can print. The layer lines on the prints are extremely consistent and the tolerances of everything is beautiful. While the overall footprint of the Core 1 is a little bigger than similar printers, I love the fact that they added the little handles to the side to make it easier to move and carry around. I like that the top and the front are made of plexiglass and the fact that they even have door sensors for safety. The slicer software takes a second to get used to if you haven't used Prusa before, but after you've printed one or two things, you get used to it. And honestly, I kind of prefer the Prusa software, considering the fact I can use all my other printers on the Prusa software. 
This printer did not come with a camera whenever I got it. However, you can use any camera device such as an old phone or an ESP32 camera. They've done it this way to make it way more user friendly and you can put the camera wherever you'd like inside of it. Now, if you do purchase the Core One, it does come with a camera. However, the hangup for this printer is the price. Currently, it's around $1,200 for the assembled version or you can get the kit for just shy of a grand. The price of the Core One is higher than most printers that are similar to it. With that being said, if you can't afford it, then I can't recommend it to you. However, I will recommend this printer over almost any other printer that I currently have. Prusa does have upgrade kits dating back to all of their other printers. So if you have an older printer and you wanna make it a current version printer, you can. Being able to upgrade an old printer to a current version is amazing and incredibly rare in this space. For the Core One, it is a printer that is definitely designed to last and one that I will be using very frequently in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.